Moran. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, thank you both for being here. Uh, earlier this afternoon, I posted on Reddit uh, the, this, this hearing topic and asked uh, Kansans in particular to, um, to comment on what I should know, what would be some suggestions for questions that uh, they might have. And interesting, in just the last few hours, 125 responses, most of them uh, very long and thoughtful. Mm -hmm. um, let me explore one of the topics that was raised. And it, in a sense, it's regulatory arbitrage. Is there an effort uh, to make certain that the regulations are uniform uh, globally? Uh, and in the absence of that, is there not a risk that the activity is simply taken offshore uh, if, if we're the country that is the regulator? Uh, and is there an economic consequence to that happening? What's the downside to our country and its economy and the opportunities for innovation if the United States is the heavy regulator and other countries are not? Sure, maybe uh, I can take that from both the domestic perspective and then the international, uh, because here, of course, in the United States, we have the states and we have the federal uh, regulation. Uh, we do, a, a, I think, a fairly good job, as, as uh, Mr. Cotney mentioned in his testimony, of the states working together to try to, kind, to find common approaches whenever possible, and then with FinCEN to work with the states on the federal approach and try to get as much uh, common ground there as we can so that we have as much consistency as we can, at least within the United States. Then we go externally. Externally, at least from the money laundering and, and counter-terrorist finance perspective, the Financial Action Task Force is the international standard-setting body uh, that attempts to keep uh, uh, consistency in standards across the globe. And it's a body that has uh, both carrots and sticks, and, and uh, it's been fairly effective in getting countries to put uh, regulations in place. But all that being said, I think if businesses are going to leave the United States based on perceived or real regulatory burden, um, I think they're going to find the gain short-lived. Uh, because as, as, as mentioned, uh, countries are going to have an interest in figuring out the tax implications in monetary policy. It's not just the United States that has an interest in these things and in protecting consumers and investors and so forth. So the regulation is going to catch up. Uh, and I think there are, are plenty of, of good reasons to uh, bring uh, innovative uh, business and keep innovative business in the United States. I think it's, it's very important to leverage the strengths of each of us, the, the, the state regulators and, and the federal agencies. Um, at the local level, um, as a state regulator, um, I know, for example, that, the, uh, that there's a, a large Cambodian population in, in Lowell. I know uh, Lowell, Massachusetts. I know that there is a large Brazilian population in Framingham. I send examiners out every day to conduct examinations to do transaction testing, testing actual transactions of money going abroad. Um, so we have, a, we have the boots on the ground and a local understanding of these companies. And then we pair that with the, the national perspective and knowledge of federal agencies who also interact uh, uh, on an international level. By leveraging these strengths, I think uh, we do a much better job at detecting and preventing this illegal activity. Do you, uh, I appreciate both those answers. Do you have a sense uh, about the importance of this activity being centered in the United States? What is it that, this is, more, uh, this is a broader question than a regulatory one, but what benefits does our economy and our innovative environment gain by encouraging or at least not discouraging the Bitcoin from being centered here? So I, I think what we gain is, is our continued reputation and, and economic advantage as, as being the country where innovators come to start new businesses, and that gives us great economic value um, and uh, uh, something we would want to continue. So I, I think the great challenge for the regulators are, are to encourage innovation wherever we can um, and put smart regulation that try in place that tries to deal with risks, uh, very real risks about which we need to be concerned. Uh, and, but minimizes burden on innovation. You know, clearly, the, the United States, you know, the mother of invention, 
Uh, we, want to, we want to take advantage of innovation. And to the extent that we see innovation in, in this space, that could have spillover effects into other payments or other financial in industries or even beyond the financial services industry. So we want to be able to encourage innovation and, uh, uh, and have it developed here locally. I appreciate that. Mr. Chairman, thank you.